Hello everyone, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day and making some really good trades as per usual and I'm going to be doing a bit of a recap here now that we dive into the analysis, uh, the markets ended uh, down today, SPY down about 50 basis points, Triple Q is down about 91 basis points and the biggest loser of today was the IWM down about 1.36%. Uh, percent. So again, uh, small cast being very interest rate sensitive and if assuming the PPI today uh, came in hotter than expected, uh, let me just take a look here. Core PPI was 0.5%. Uh, the forecast was for, was for it to be 0.1%, so significantly hotter. And PPI month over month, 0.3%. Expected was 0.1%. So significantly higher when you look at the, uh, the producer's uh, the producers uh, uh inflation so that's never good because that's going to bleed into consumers uh down the road so again inflation is still not under control the market is obviously struggling now uh with uh you know continuing to push higher uh we'll dive we'll take a look here at market cipher i'll tell you guys the numbers here so right now when we look at the daily time frame you have a 16 and a minus five on the dual bench strength index showing that we should technically continue to go up in the S&P but when we look at the weekly it's possible that it could start to roll over just a little bit but it's it's not showing any signs of any significant top just yet uh, the daily time frame here on uh, wave edge is showing a significant significant amount of selling on the daily time frame uh, like big big uh, sell, sell indicators here on the daily um, and they're not just like big ones but they're all clustered up in one area so that's uh, that's usually what you look for a possible top here uh, I mean I'm not saying it's going to be a, a complete market top but who knows it could it could very well be a significant market top but uh, we'll, we'll take that we'll take it day by day uh, and to next week we have Nvidia earnings and you know today if you guys were following SMCI uh, took a massive hit on the stock uh, obviously you know extreme overbought conditions uh it's been going up really non-stop since january 18 it's been pumping basically a total of 230 uh, sorry 227 percent uh in only 28 days so i mean this market cap has basically doubled in in that period that period of time and it's just so Nothing fundamentally has changed. They're just expecting, you know, AI to take over, right? And then when you look at the Yahoo comments, it was just a fun fun to see the Yahoo comments today. Uh, they were absolutely hilarious. People were saying, once we cross 1,000, the stock will never look back. And we're only going to keep going up from there. Because there's just AI is the future. And it's going to, you know, it's going to save us. So, I mean, whatever for whatever reason they were buying, uh, another gap opened today, obviously. We gapped open at 1040, 1060, and it was basically nonstop selling from there. Uh, we take a look at the five-minute time frame. Yep, that small gap up, and the stock just completely fell apart. And it was all downside price action, so down about 20% today, or 19.99%. And so one single day, it's down in the after hours as well. So we went from $1,000 to $800 a share in one single trading day and I, I do believe that there is significantly more downside uh, because this this is this was not a natural uh, breakout you know this is this is a parabolic run and it will end in in complete disaster because these these things usually do that a uh, good example is MVIS uh, microvision when the stock went from one dollar and 85 cents to eight dollars and ten cents uh, within uh, I believe it was 30 30 to 40 days uh, and then the stock, you know what happened to the stock? You didn't, no, it did not just look, it, it, you know, it didn't cross $8 and never looked back. And it was only upside from there. The stock cratered about, uh, about uh, you know, 75%, 72% within 90 days of that. So, I mean, like, it, 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 this is just the way it goes. And it, you, there's, there's no real sense to uh, FOMO into these AI stocks right now. What you want to be, you know, doing is probably playing defensive, getting out, getting out of these types of stocks, and getting some nice cash cash positions, as you we could be getting a, a dip next week. And I mean, Nvidia earnings. A lot of people are bull, bullish on Nvidia earnings. When you look at the Nvidia earnings, uh, 
I mean, they've been beating uh, for the last four quarters that they've been reporting uh, nonstop. And they've been pumping ever since. And I've been look, talking to a lot of people and, again, expecting another... Yeah, I'm expecting another 30% gap up tomorrow in NVIDIA. Like, can't wait to, like, make, like, $20,000 on these these random calls that I bought expecting $1,000 a share for, for NVIDIA anytime now. I mean, like, yeah, it could, it could happen. But what's the... Is it really going to add in... You know, this stock is now at a $1.79 trillion market cap. Are you really going to add, like... They go, you push it to a thirty, sorry, a two trillion dollar valuation in just that period of time, like in in the, like one trading day again. Like at one point, you will get a hedge fund or a big seller that's just gonna take profit. And this thing will crater. Uh, but uh, and it has nothing to say that Nvidia is a bad company. But the stock, these stock prices are just extremely overvalued and elevated, long in the tooth. Uh, all right, let's take a look at some individual names like. Uh, Tesla and uh, Roku. So we'll actually cover Roku first uh, because Roku had earnings today. And again, we came down. Uh, we've been doing analysis on Roku for quite a bit of time. We we're tracking a bullish pattern. But in the last couple of days, uh, we had a big breakdown. And, you know, in the and I think before earnings, it, it dropped 8%, which invalidated the bullish scenario. So then we had to take a look at the bearish scenario and what could be coming from it. And really what I saw was a one two setup and in the in the sea leg coming down and it dropped beautifully after that coming down in a in a third wave now this leg should be finished now uh it should retrace a little bit back up it's obviously oversold roku got hammered 23 percent in one single trading day after earnings it should get a bounce back up but then should make another low after that. And then from there on, you could form bullish divergence and you want to be looking for that divergence when, once the, the fifth wave is finishing. And then you could find a definitive bottom finally for Roku and then rally up into some higher levels. Okay. Now let's take a look here at uh, Tesla. So Tesla here uh, getting absolutely uh, a beautiful run. Uh, again, we've been tracking this one uh, as well. And this one could have already finished as well. So if you guys have been following me, uh, we were looking for an ABC pattern. Uh, and then the C leg, we have a one two, in a five wave move. And that's exactly what we got. One, two, three, pull back in a fourth wave, quick ABC crash pattern, uh, crash, you know, crash formation. And then our target was uh, too long around the 182 area. And then boom, final rally in a fifth wave, impulsive move. Now this move should be finished. If it wants to go higher, it could. Um, but again, just be careful because now if we're looking for a fourth wave top, we have met the minimum requirements. The C leg could be in here. And I would not, uh, you know, you know, uh, try to risk it to squeeze like, uh, let's say, uh, how, how, how do I say this? Squeeze another two, three percent out of this trade more than I should take my profits now and then wait for a better setup because if we do pull back in the markets next week you better believe tesla is going to follow and again i love tesla for a long position right now i i like i, I do like it it's beaten up and if it could come back down to the 166 area get in deeper into my buy area then yeah i would be looking for a, a, a heavier long position but i take it some profits here exiting the position even is a great idea and uh, that's probably that's probably what we're doing right now okay uh, looking at the daily, you know, you, you've rallied significantly on the RSI as well. And the price hasn't really done that significant of a move. So I think this one could be finished and then you might reverse sooner than later. Uh, but we'll see next week on NVIDIA earnings. Uh, all right, let's take a look here at Starbucks. So Starbucks obviously uh, holding up here <laughs> inside this buy area once again. Uh, we, we are, we are it's, it is definitely struggling. Uh, we want to see it come uh, a little bit higher. But right now, um, it's uh, it, it, it's 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 definitely struggling still. It's 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 a tough trade. You know, it's not an easy trade. The setup is not that beautiful, and I would wait uh, for it to go maybe uh, maybe clear this area here back up uh, about, about above ninety five before I can really reconsider that the the scenario the bullish scenario is still in play, or at least the wave the sea leg is still in play here. Or else it could have truncated, which I wouldn't like either. But 
that means this ABC count could have been a different. Okay. <coughs> All right. Sorry, I'm still sick here, but uh, giving you guys some analysis. Let's take a look at Mara. A lot of people like Mara right now, and then they're big fans of Mara. Uh, so Mara, uh, uh, to me, looks like this ABC pattern has finished. And you're going to come back down in a C leg. Okay. So now let's look for a C leg target because crypto seems to be struggling a little bit here too. Uh, not getting so much upside and kind of just hanging by a thread. Uh, and Mara not really getting a bid here, even with coin up this much, you know, coin was up significantly today, uh, but kind of gave up a lot of its gains. Uh, it was up like 16%. So I guess it gave half of its gains away. Uh, but Mara, I'll, Sorry, this is right. But Mara, I'll be looking for a, a bit of a bigger retrace. So I'll actually show you guys my target. So this target that I had here, it was already finished. Uh, and then uh, I'll, I'll show you guys a, another one that I have here set up. So I'll just uh, do another target for you guys. And it, it won't be that crazy given the, the extension of the, the B wave. So it won't retrace that much in my opinion, but it will still get a nice retrace. So we're going to have target... Uh, for Mara, uh, right around uh, the $13, thirteen dollar range, all the way as low to the three dollar and sixty four uh, range, but I really doubt we'll get down to the three dollars and sixty four cents area. I think worst case you'll stop at the ten dollar level or the nine under one point two three six. So that's basically it. Uh, after that, uh, you should find some support, and then you could consolidate in this area for quite a bit of time. Uh, forming probably a larger cycle, uh, you know, probably a larger cycle, uh, you know, bottom, maybe a wave two bottom before the halving comes in April, before you really start to come out of it. Okay. And that would mean Bitcoin uh, is topping out here too. Excuse me. And is is going to get a bigger drop in the coming, uh, in the coming uh, weeks and months. So, I mean, Bitcoin to me, I think 52,000 to 55,000 is your sell area, a short area even. And, and then you could just write it down to possibly 30,000 to 35,000 where I'm going to be opening back along. So once the price gets back down to there, but again, there's no guarantee that it does that, but that's what I'm willing to bet on right now. Uh, okay. So let's head over and we'll take a look here at, uh, some other, other stocks. We'll take a look at, uh, uh, not SMCI, we already covered that one at the beginning of the video, but we'll take a look here at NVIDIA. So NVIDIA right now, obviously the, the, the topic probably of the video. Uh, so this one, uh, you know, it almost made a new high today, but it didn't. And what it did was probably just sell off into the close. Uh, you have earnings next, is it Wednesday? So next Wednesday after the close, you have earnings. They are expected to have for $20 billion in revenue, obviously another increase from previous quarter, and uh, EPS of 4.58, wow. So, I mean, the, the expectations are high, and they are probably baked in the cake already, and if they don't blow it out of the water with even better than expected earnings, then the stock could very well start dumping. <coughs> and if they miss, or they do worse than expected, that's going to be the first time in four quarters that they do badly and i mean the, the 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 nvidia investors right now are just betting so heavily that this stock is just going to keep pumping it's the the, the probabilities for a short position or a like a to bet against you know it going you know going up some more uh it's bet that it's going to go down are probably in your favor right now so i mean that's I, I, I don't really want to get in front of this thing, but I'm short SMCI already. I think that's kind of a precursor <coughs> to what's going to happen next week. I'm not saying it's going to go down 20%, but I'm saying uh, SMCI could be painting a picture for us in the coming week. All right. So I think that's good. We'll take a look at another stock here. Uh, probably one more, maybe a couple more. It's Friday, you know, doing a Friday recap a little bit earlier today. Uh, we'll take a look at Apple. Uh, so Apple right now is coming down and it is it is definitely struggling, but this does not look like a third wave to me. <clears throat> to me, this looks like we could still possibly be in uh, a wave two, you know, a bit of an ABC. So again, this could extend further out. 
so you still you could still be in your B leg uh, so kind of like an A B C uh, on B but again the markets are struggling and if we look at you know the S&P here uh, that means you know a, a, a Apple might not it might not rally it's already down a little bit in the after hours not, not anything significant but the S&P is definitely struggling the Nasdaq is struggling right now and we all we all know there's like very tight upsloping trend lines and if they do break you know you could you could get a big big sell-off or not a not that big of a sell-off but a sell-off to at least some moving averages uh but yeah we'll see we'll see i mean it's it's a tough trade tough trade right now on apple in my opinion i think there's a lot of better opportunities out there if you want to short some stocks there's probably like uh meta i mean meta is probably it's made it's nominal high i guess you could say it's technically meet, met its minimum requirements for wave five. So I guess the top could be in in meta. But after, you know, a 20% gap up for a dividend payment. And you actually, funny enough, you have the dividend payment on Wednesday too. Uh, which is going to be affecting the stock for the first time. Uh, all right. Let's take a look at natural gas. Natural gas today, trying to hold its own. So that gas has been pummeled, beaten to the beaten to shit. Almost nothing left it's unrec you know it's it's trying to hold this level here at one dollar and 63 cents there's some some buying in the four hour uh but the daily we'll take a look at the daily time frame on natural gas it's been it's so it's so beaten up beaten down to just almost is is very tough trade do you have a green dot confirmation on the daily the weekly however shows that we could possibly extend even further but are you due for a relief rally yes you are you are you are due for a relief rally you should get a retrace. You should get a retrace at any moment now. And if you, we are following this pattern, which is a fifth wave, uh, then what you should do is, uh, oops, sorry, let me, let me just uh, get this on the primary cycle here. What you should do is you should come down in a third leg, which is what you're doing now, and you should pump back up in a wave four and then finish off with a nominal low with the uh, uh, fifth wave and then I'll end the larger cycle low for wave five uh, but again a pump back even to the two dollar range is a 23 to 24 percent pump so that's probably what we're going to be looking for we already have bullish divergence so that's that's really nice to see <coughs> excuse me all right uh, that's about it uh, I think we'll cover uh, oil here Oil, again, very boring, but it is showing signs of strength. It is trying to breach this $70, $79, $78 level. If it can get some daily closes above 80, then that would be the confirmation that we're going to go higher. But for now, we're still struggling here. And I think there's some better trades out there than oil. <clears throat> Let's take a look at the TLT and the yields. So I think we covered the TLT the other day, right? And funny enough, uh, you know, with the TLT getting rejected from our cell area. <coughs> excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Let me get some water. Let me get some water. I got some water. Okay. So the TLT coming up here, getting rejected, and then coming back and retesting it as and getting rejected once again, it's starting to show me that this... Uh, this is a significant resistance and the sell area is quite accurate to the tick even, right? Then and now if we're going to look for some lower levels and in, in the yields and the rate cuts come soon, you know, they do come and then the market is selling off. That means the, the rate cuts are not going to be bullish. The rate cuts are, are what's going to cause the market to unravel and we're going to go significantly lower. I know it goes against the grain. And, you know, it's uh, counterintuitive to how the market works, but that's just the way it, it is. You know, people are thinking, oh, my God, I can't wait for rate cuts. The market's going to go so much higher when that, got, when that happens. But that's just not the case. You know, that's just not how the market works. You may, you know, you may know, think that you know a lot about the market, but you know, that, that's, that's usually not how it works. Right. So there's things that you think would work really, really well. It, in probably in the long run and stuff like that doesn't work right away you know that you get your rate cuts and the market starts to unravel and everything falls apart and it, it could be because uh you know you have such bad economic numbers and we are going into recession because the mark the the, the the fed is no longer forecasting a recession where we're no soft land there's no landing where everything's fine there's strong economy strong job numbers low inflation everything is okay so if 
everything's okay. Why? And why is there such still such such uh, a struggle to get inflation back to two percent? Anyways, that if that's the case and the the highs are in for the yields, then the TLT is truncating, which means it's it's finished its sea leg, and it's gonna take off in the short term. All right, and you already have a reset on the stochastics on the daily time frame with bullish divergence. So that's already a good a positive sign here for the TLT. Okay, all right. Um, I think that's about it. I don't have much to add. Just be careful getting into some heavy long positions here on the, the market. Um, you know, we're at all time highs. Uh, you're seeing massive amounts of euphoria into AI. All signs point that it, it could end at any moment. And when it does, it's, it could, it could blow up very quickly. Kind of like the Tes uh, the EV bubble. You know, when the EV sector, everyone's foaming EVs, EV, EV, EV. And when it fell apart, <coughs> it fell apart very quickly. You know, Lucid tanked. Uh, you know, Lie Motors tanked. Uh, Neo tanked. Uh, and, I mean, like, look look at these stocks. They were, they were, they were in the stratosphere, you know, and, now, and then they came back right back to Earth. And people that were buying up here, you know, they're saying the same thing. The AI people are, were saying then. Oh, you know, this is this this is the future. I'm buying the future now. And this thing's going to a, a three, four hundred dollars a share. And that's what I'm gonna sell. Right? So it's just like it just did you know, that's just retail, retail talking. And looking at Yahoo, the Yahoo comments, it's on SMCI, it's it was kinda like uh it's it's kinda funny. I can't wait to rent to cross to a thousand. Once we cross to a thousand, that's what I'm buying, and it's never going down. <laughs> Funny enough, it crossed the thousand and went up just a little bit more, enough to rope a few more traders in, a few more FOMORs, get everyone's last dollar into it, and then boom, rip down 20%. All right, that's it. I'm done uh, for today. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to. Like and subscribe, join the Discord, and join the, you know, subscribe to me on the YouTube channel. And you guys can get uh, all my trades for free. I get I post my trades for free inside the Discord as well. And hopefully you guys, uh, you guys will. Anyways, thanks for supporting, guys. Have a wonderful weekend. Enjoy it.